all the demons that collect around betrayal, they help hide betrayal. But they also hide malcontent, the malcontent. And they can possess a person. Even if you're a believer, they can still possess you. But it's mainly the soul that they want to possess. They hide there while they slowly poison a person. They slowly poison you. Sickness will creep into one's body, mind, heart, will, character, purpose, and vision. A sickness is there. It forms a negativity that your body wasn't meant to endure. One is put into a sleeping trance where everything is evaluated true according to the eyes of malcontentment, resentment, and distortion. It plants the thoughts and makes you think that you are doing the right thing, that you're upright in what you're thinking and saying. But these things cause inversion, perversion, condemnation, and blaming to become very active and very destructive. Family, friends, acquaintances, mates, even the Holy Spirit are grieved and driven away. And that's pretty serious when you grieve the Holy Spirit to the point where he leaves you. And when you feel abandoned, which you will all feel when you're heavily into this, there's a demand, well, then you get oppressed. Dismay, discouragement, all that comes into to play. The demons will convince you that you are righteous and judging correctly while they push you further into exclusion and seclusion from reality and from God's word. What we see when this happens is that A person will carry the banner of something that's unrighteous as though it's, it's the right thing to do. It's the right, right thing to say. Well, so-and-so sinned, or so-and-so did this, or they didn't do this that they should have done. You know, but the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. If you don't see that you're not walking in love, therefore you cannot be walking in righteousness. Yeah. But there's more and more defense of what is corrupt and less of what's right in God's sight being defended. Left in this unchecked state, stress, paranoia, keep increasing until they rip the heart out of you. And that's one of the jobs of betrayal. That's another job of malcontentment. To rip the heart out of you. Have a heart attack. And then the role of the victim. One will rip the heart out of their mate, of their family, a congregation, and even out of one's pets. They'll make their pets sick because of malcontentment and betrayal is there. And in this 
high state of stress, the trail will make sure no area of your life is left untouched. Doesn't matter whether it's your prosperity, your jobs, your, you know, everything is touched. And he will give you every excuse, every reasoning to stop walking with Jesus because of it. If you're finding reasons to be complaining about something, you're already heavily in malcontentment. But you're also being led by distortions in doing so. Please note that demons do not leave easily. These demons are not these Squadron of Eleven is what they actually are. It's Eleven altogether. They do not leave easily. Once you've invited them in, or one of them, it invites the rest of them in. But in order for them to be broken, uh, you must allow yourself to accept that Jesus, the Son of God, is in you. And you are in him. You see, you can't change until you accept that. You can't be set free until you've accepted that. Jesus is called the Lion of Judah. Therefore, you must allow the Lion in you to rise up in confidence and faith in order to break off these, of this, platoon of possessing demons. Squadron of them. When the lion roars, everything around trembles in fear because the lion sees himself as undefeatable. For you to successfully break malcontentment, You've got to be willing to roar like the lion at it. You can't pussyfoot with this thing. You cannot pussyfoot with betrayal. It, 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 it just doesn't work. And Jesus at no time seen himself as defeated. Did you notice that? And he tells us that we're more than victorious. We're more than conquerors. We're more, more. Why are we more? Jesus. Because when we let our soul roar like the lion at Satan, not at one another, but at Satan, Satan flees in terror. His demons flee in terror. So, we have to make that choice. Are we undefeatable when we see ourselves as undefeatable in Jesus? Are we uncontainable? Are we that victorious? Are we saved? And, and you see, that's part of your identity, but it's also part of being that overcomer. You know, if the lion roars and a mouse squeaks next to it, the lion doesn't run in fear. Have you noticed that? It just goes... And that's the end of it. Well, most people, they take what the mouse says is more important than what the lion roared at. Mm -hmm. 
And then they're wondering why this stuff is. Why am I being hit with this? Why is this coming at me? Who's responsible for all this stuff coming at me? It's the malcontentment that possesses you, that pulls it in, gets you to speak in your sleep, gets this to happen, that to happen. The spirit of malcontentment can be easily activated through witchcraft. It can also be activated by somebody's soul touching yours that is trying to make a bond or a, a, a tie to you. And your soul is disquieted. And malcontentment immediately comes charging in. You know, sometimes you wonder why children are all of a sudden be in such a negative mode. Well, something has touched their soul. Malcontentment has raised its head after something touched their soul. And, you, you know, this isn't an item that goes away quickly. It's got to be worked at. It is when we see ourselves as this victorious and that, that we can use this power that is given to us and, and use it in a, you know, shall we say fully or completely, to end malcontents reign and possession of our soul. Because that's what it wants. It wants control of your soul. So that you speak and think and act and go after the things it tells you till it can destroy you. Until then we, uh, we can break things off we can bind and send it. But we got to be willing to grow into steadfastness to defeat it. we got to be willing to say no to, to all the complaining and bitching and roaming and put downs. And you see, when we grow in this steadfastness, we must also grow in love. And we must grow in who we are in Jesus. That identity has to be there. It's like trying to go on a long trip. Let's say a thousand mile trip. And making sure that you don't have any gas and you don't have any air in your tires. <laughs> and you're going to push this vehicle all the way for that thousand mile trip, right? It wears you out. Because you're not doing it what, the way it's supposed to be done, right? So, in order to build a steadfastness, if you're not willing to grow in love, malcontentment always has a foothold to come back in. If you're not going to let your ID get into your heart, Malcontentment and betrayal will always want to come back, but it will come back with rot and decay and resentment. It will come back pushing the spirit of squandering because people don't want to resist squandering. If you had a chance of Earning a thousand dollars or spending a thousand dollars, everybody will want to spend that thousand dollars before they earn it. No. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. Yeah. Put it away. Well, malcontentment keeps you in shall we say, in service to the flesh and opposed to the things of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, 19-21, we see the things malcontentment binds us to. 
in verse 19 it says, Now the deeds of the flesh are evident. Does that mean they're hidden? Well, yeah, you can see the fruits of them. Which are sexual immorality. It's a big thing today. People consider them popular because they can be sexual and immoral. It's Impurity. And impurity has the thing is making yourself unclean. So that rejection can take hold of you. That people can reject you. Sensuality. Well, <clears throat> sensuality, most people say, oh, well, it refers to pornography. No, it refers to a whole lot more than that. When you're in sensuality, you look at another person for sexual pleasure, not for getting to know them as a person. Sensuality can be something that you do to attract attention to you, but it can also mean that you're, let's say, wearing too much perfume, too much cologne. See, what you're doing is trying to please the senses and not please God. And there's sensuality always form causes you to form your own love potions in your life because something looks pleasing to the eyes. Okay. Or to the taste buds. Oh, I just love your new car. You just made it a talisman for a love potion. <coughs> you know, you're supposed to love one another. It doesn't tell you to love things anywhere in the Word of God. Okay. But this sensuality is such that it may involve the type of music you listen to. Oh, well, it's got the beat I love. Oh, really? No, that's... Uh, we can't sing to that song if we praise and worship is too slow. Some songs are only listening songs that are played here for praise and worship. And that's, you know... If you want to do that for after services and they have late listening, that's one thing. But that's not praise and worship. Praise and worship, you get involved with praising God, giving thanks for things. But the sensuality is that aspect of uh, where you declare love. Now sometimes we've had food served and say, oh, I just love this meal tonight. What do you do to that food? Love he made it into a love potion. You see, that aspect of sensuality is when you put a false comment on another person. Okay? I love what you're doing. And you hate it right into the very tips of your toes. What sensuality does is cause you to lie to yourself and lie to others. Okay. These are just some of the things involved with the sensuality, but it is the main source of putting love potions into your life and into the lives of others. Okay. Idolatry. Well, anything that you worship aside from God is an idol. I don't care whether it's your job. Mm -hmm. 
or some disgusting practice that you carry on. Say all that you use condoms and pin them on the wall. Oh, sick. And pray to them that he'll have more, that they'll be a good luck charm to bring in more women for him to use and abuse. You see, you can make those things idols. Anything, you can make an idol that takes you away from God and the will of God. Sorcery. I want my will above God's. You just practice sorcery. The sorcery is, is deadly. I want my will done. That lazy, no good for nothing God didn't answer my prayer. What have you just done? Grieved the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but you've lied. <laughs> you've cast a spell of discontentment and a lot of malcontentment to take over. When you bring gossip from one person to another, you're practicing witchcraft, sorcery. Isn't that wonderful? When you murmur against what's being taught, oh, not that guy talking again. Not that subject again. Well, that subject wouldn't be coming out unless the Holy Spirit thought it was necessary. So if you're fighting the Holy Spirit, who's going to win in the end? <laughs> Enmities. These things will come up, and sometimes it shows up as a sea creature, a sea. Okay. Loves to attach itself to your back. to do when it's there. Stings you everywhere. Pleasant creation, right? I know. <coughs> I know about that. Look at the people that want to collect them all the time. That's a problem. Okay. But how do you bring it on? To speak against another person. By what? Just speak against somebody else. You can open the door. And the wonderful thing is this combo demon, Nikki Siki, puts the mark on you and psh, you got it coming at you. Hmm? Strife. We've had enough strife around. People should know what strife is like in their life. It's not pleasant. Well, see, a lot of that is in malcontentment. You're trying to think of yourself greater than you ought to. It's more important than everybody else. Everybody should be worshiping you or parts of you or whatever, you know. But it's the strife. Jealousy. When you're jealous about what somebody else got, you're already malcontent, obvious. You may not like to admit it, but you're in big malcontentment. That demon's got major hold of you. Angry. 
change. Anger, rage to flare means both fear and malcontentment present. But remember, malcontentment comes under the trail. Anger, rage is its own empire. So you get angry at others, and you get angry at yourself for being angry at others. And then you curse God out for it. And you try and avoid God thereafter. If you're heavy into anger rage over anything, you're busy in malcontentment, cursing out God. Telling him he doesn't know what he's doing. He's an old fuddy-duddy that has lost sight of reality, and you're in reality, so you know better what's going on. Okay? Disputes. What's the difference between strife and disputes? Strife is maybe by yourself. Disputes are with others. No, strife is with others. Disputes you can have with others. But disputes come over misinterpretation of the Word of God and Paul's doctrines. If you're trying to support a doctrine of demons and somebody's trying to show you that it's not biblical, you are going to flare up in a dispute. You can defend the false demon, the false doctrine, way before you would accept anything that's the truth. That's why there's 9,211 false doctrines of demons that are these doctrines demons are throughout the Christian world because it allows for disputes how can you get together and learn the truth if you're willing to dispute yeah. factions okay we're breaking off into this little group and we're brought because we don't agree with you and we're breaking off into this other one. And we like the uh, spring orgies, so we're, we're leaving this church and we're going over to this other one because they're practicing it. Well, you know, all these factions form you. Why do you think you have so many denominations of things? How do you think you got so many protesters all over the place? In verse 21, it says, envying. Well, envy is when you uh, want something that somebody else has. But envy implies that you are cursing that person for having it, and you don't. You're trying to make them a failure in their life so you can get or make sure that they don't have what you want. Drunkenness. One of the signs that a person's living in malcontentment is a desire to get drunk or get drugged out of their mind. They're in malcontentment. Malcontentment also affects in this same grouping of drunkenness is becoming a sexual slave. A slave to sexual fantasies and stuff like that is involved in drunkenness. Carousing. Well, you know, some of the young ladies I've counseled, they don't believe that they're whoring around because they never have more than six guys in a day. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Moderation. Yeah, they're moderate, you see. A whore is not moderate. Well, carousing means that you're not looking for a mate under God's program. You're looking
looking for your fantasies to be filled. And malcontent will bring you all sorts of fantasies that cannot be filled. Okay. Hatred. Well, hatred is, you know, works with murder. But what is special about hatred? It's the opposite of love. Oh, yeah. It's more than just the opposite of love. There's something about what hatred does. It destroys love. Twists. It twists, destroys, but something else. It hardens, hardens your heart. Hardens your heart, it does, yes. It's and cold, cold heart. It's a refusal to forgive. It supports unforgiveness, yes. But there's something else it does. Hatred causes you to mock the Holy Spirit and to mock the sacrifice of Jesus. And malcontent will keep you going at it. And then it says, and things uh, like these, of which I forewarned you, uh, you know, forewarn you now, and just as I for, uh, have forewarned you previously, that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So unless you get rid of the malcontentment, once you get into these habits, you, you can't be broken without being in Jesus. Yeah. Well, you can't, you don't have the strength to break it in your, other by yourself. These are strong demons. Malcontentment sits hidden. Betrayal sits hidden. Squandering can be obvious at times and hidden at other times. But distortion is always hidden. It just affects what your mind and brain are able to communicate about what they're seeing and hearing and sensing. Uh, but it says all these things will prevent you from entering the kingdom of God. You can't inherit what's your right to inherit. And the reason for that? Because once you have this malcontentment and you're in this trap that it's set, ingratitude and unthankfulness will prevent you from properly repenting. Because you don't see that you're in error of anything. Somebody else's, it, it's, it's circumstances, other things are just collapse. You'll pile up on you. There's circumstances. So unless one acknowledges all areas where one has been um, committed to walk through and in by the pulls of the flesh, one disqualifies oneself from the inheritance. See, if you're going to protect any one area of your, your lifestyle and not recognize it for what it is, according to Galatians 5, 19 to 21, if you're not willing to recognize that flesh zone, you know, it says, a little leavening leavens the whole lump. Well, what happens, it poisons your body, it poisons your soul, and it disconnects you from the spirit. And when you disqualify yourself from the inheritance, is there pleasure in your life? Is there peace in your life? Is it the joy that celebrates? No. 
and one establishes a legal right for malcontentment, betrayal, resentment, and distortion to possess you and destroy your peace and your prosperity. You see, because you have to come in agreement with them. But that's what you like. That's, that's what you love for them to become a talisman of control. When we have committed our mind, our heart, and our will to break free from malcontentment, squandering, revenge, resentment, distortion, and betrayal, then we need to confess our attachment or attachments to the um, to them, you know, that 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 they're they, that they've been that influence. They have been what has soiled and stained our feet from walking with Jesus. And that our desire is to be free and walk in love and with the Holy Spirit. We're going to be willing to walk with Him. Now to, to break free we have to do certain things as prescribed on dealing with betrayals and immunizations. One is to carry out a foot washing to our bodies and souls, washed clean of all the tarnishing and the um, muck and, and pollution that was put on there by this 11 demon squadron. Second, we have to take the body of Jesus to be healed and strengthened in Jesus so that we can be steadfast and correct that where we were willing to fall down on before or get entrapped in before. And third, the blood of Jesus, to reinstate our first love for Jesus. See, when you're in mal uh, malcontentment, he gets you to love him and not Jesus. You notice when you first knew about Jesus, you were all hep and ready to go. And then after a little while, Jesus who? You know, there, there was no fire, no zeal left. Well, it, it got consumed by that malcontent, contentment. And if you don't call back that first love, what happens is that you don't see yourself as in covenant. You see yourself as a coaster, a uh, Laodicean, a coaster. <laughs> you know, and we're going to want to be like Jesus. And he's our shield against Satan's backlash for removing the 11 demon squadron. Satan will fight back to get you back into that mode. But you don't have to sign up for his program. And in the second sip of the blood, it's in our declaring of thankfulness for the spirit of Jesus in us. You know, if we're not thankful for what we've been given, what are we given? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, on the foot washing, the breaking off of malcontentment, it's Father, as we wash one another's feet, we declare the stain and uncleanness from malcontentment and the ten other squadron uh, stain makers there, demons, are now washed away. We see ourselves and others clean before you, Father, 
and all mankind. for the breaking off of mouth and talent on the broken body. Father, we bless this bread to be the body of Jesus. And we thank you that it was broken for us to be healed and to be set free from all the wrong words the wrong thinking, the poverty and the sickness um, from on us that was caused by, um, because of leaving the door open uh, for malcontentment and its attachment to our body and soul. And as we take the body, we break all ties, attachments and bonds and vows made to malcontentment and the rest of his of their garrison or squadron and we move all the labels that we agreed to from them. in Jesus name and we thank you now father for the freedom we have in Jesus So, as we take the body of Jesus, we break all ties, <coughs> attachments, bonds, and vows made to malcontentment and the rest of their squadron under betrayal. And we remove the labels that we've agreed to because of that. So we now take and break the body of Jesus to claim freedom. 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 Father, we bless this wine to be the blood of Jesus. And in the first step, we recommit ourselves to oneness with Jesus, to the covenants established by Jesus, and for it to be our shield against the backlash of Satan and his 11 demon squadron. So, in the, again in the second sip, we declare thankfulness that Jesus is in us and not malcontentment. Our hearts are set to walk in the Spirit, thanks to your grace and your or empowerments that you've given us to walk. Okay. So in this first step, we recommit ourselves to oneness with Jesus. And to the covenants established by Jesus, and that it is our shield against all backlash from Satan and his 11 demon squad. So, to the freedom from them and the oneness. And then the second step, we declare thankfulness that Jesus is in us. And not now contentment. <laughs> Our heart <coughs> is set to walk in the Spirit. Thanks to your grace, Father, for the empowerments that you've given us. And we thank you for them. And for that joy that we're clean. We give you again thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.